Hello, I'm making this video for people uh, addicted to or having struggles with uh, pharmaceutical drugs and want to find a way to get off and to recover their health. So IV NAD, intravenous NAD, NAD stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. Uh, this is being used uh, in different clinics around the country and I'd like to explain a bit about how it works and what are the benefits and what are some of the issues that come up with using NAD. So NAD is found a lot in research. It's been shown to improve many different chronic and, uh, conditions, thought to be maybe the underlying cause of many chronic diseases, but not much information about how it's used for rehabilitation. So I'll explain what NAD is, uh, what does it do in the body, how it's used for detoxification, and what are some of the pros and cons. So NAD, I've seen the term ancient molecule, it simply means that it's been around for a very long time in mammalian cells. Uh, it's essential for functioning, health, uh, vitality, etc. Uh, and where it's most commonly uh, recognized is inside the, what's called the Krebs cycle. So here's an illustration of a cell, um, and you'll see the nucleus uh, and then all the internal elements, um, and you'll see also uh, the illustration for the mitochondria. There are hundreds of mitochondria in cells, the most active cells being brain and heart and liver have hundreds of mitochondria within a single cell. And the mitochondria is what drives the function of the cell. No matter what the cell is supposed to do or is meant to do, the mitochondria uh, provides the energy to drive the cell to do its optimal function. And here's an illustration of maybe what a mitochondria looks like. Here is a, a diagram of the Krebs cycle, the part of the mitochondria which produces energy or ATP. Here are some arrows pointing to all the different nutrients that we know are required for this production of ATP, all the B vitamins, uh, lipoic acid, etc. And then I've circled these different, on this, on this circular spiral uh, uh, benefit, or not benefit, but the production of ATP. Uh, you'll see also here the arrows point to where NAD is part of this, this cycle of producing ATP. So what happens when uh, we ingest a drug? Uh, the uh, drug enters into our cells. The, it takes its action, and then once that is complete, it is metabolized into... Um, a sort of a drug residue. Uh, unfortunately, this, these residues can, over time, depending upon the health of the individual, the health of the cell, eventually leads to the mitochondrial dysfunction, which means there's a lower production of this energy or ATP. So once a drug has had its action, that drug residue must then be excreted from the interior of the cell to the exterior. And this is an act of transport. In other words, it does not leave the cell. The residue does not leave the cell on its own. The cell must, must transport this residue outside. And this requires ATP. So we have drug residues inside the cells, which is causing uh, lower production of ATP because of mitochondrial dysfunction. This lowered mitochondrial function is really what the, uh, the cause is of uh, side effects from medications. And therefore, because of decreased ATP, we have a lower transport, active transport of these, of these residues. So this mitochondrial dysfunction is really the cause of physical and emotional or mental symptoms. So what are the causes? Again, drugs, the drug residues, if the mitochondria are not fed and provided all those nutrients we saw in the Krebs cycle, then obviously nutritional deficiencies, not providing the cells with all the nutrients they need, will also lead to mitochondrial dysfunction. 
Then we have also uh, viruses which enter into cells. We have biotoxins which are produced by various uh, pathogens, bacteria, spirochetes, and also mold. Then we have also environmental toxins which again enter the cells and lead to the same issue with the mitochondrial function. So the NAD, and I'm speaking here about the intravenous NAD, there's other ways of getting NAD increased uh, in, the, in the cells, but in this case we're just talking about intravenous NAD, is absorbed into the cell. This will promote mitochondrial function, which will obviously increase ATP production and stimulate the excretion of these drug residues out of the interior of the cell. It will also help to excrete, help the cell to excrete these biotoxic wastes and also any environmental toxins will also be excreted from the cells. <clears throat> so really with IV NAD we are working deep, as deep as we can, into the body, into the cells. So we're talking about cellular detoxification. And the idea is then to move the person towards optimal physical and mental health. So those are the, pro those are the pros of using IV NAD. And many clinics are providing IV NAD based on this concept of getting dr drug residues outside the interior cells. <clears throat> so what happens when the cell excretes these residues. There are three primary compartments in the body where there is fluid. One is inside cells, the other is lymph, which bathes all of our cells, and then the fluid that's in our, our blood, our circulatory system. So when these residues are excreted into the lymphatic fluid, um, some of the residues go from the fluid into the, into the bloodstream. But most of this lymphatic fluid is draining up to these two ducts just under the clavicle, the collarbones. All the fluid from the extremities, from the legs, from the trunk, from the arms, will lead up and dump the lymph into the bloodstream, also from the head. But what we've seen is that most people's lymph system is more like a swamp than it is a river. And this causes primary issues for them because the NAD is helping the cells to excrete toxins outside the cell and it gets into the lymph, which is like a swamp. It hangs out there and eventually over time, those residues will find their way back into the interior of the cells and people even though they feel better after the 10 days of IV NAD, if the lymph is not flowing, they will eventually come back to the same uh, sort of symptoms they had prior to the NAD. So the lymph drains into the blood. The blood then carries these residues around and trying to help uh, filter them through the kidneys and through the liver. So if a person has a kidney issue, therefore they cannot detoxify these more water-soluble residues from the blood and they will continue to circulate around and the person will not feel well. The liver has many different ways of clearing these residues. One is to turn them into more water-soluble residues, which are filtered by the kidneys. And the liver itself must also filter and metabolize and pull these residues out of the blood. But the liver cells are also dependent upon mitochondrial function. And the, the, drug, the drugs the person has been taking has been causing liver function to greatly decline. The NAD will help liver function to improve, but it takes a while. Therefore, liver function is important and must be addressed before a person starts the IV NAD. These, uh, what is filtered by the kidneys, uh, sorry, by the liver, will then pass down a duct into the gallbladder where they are sort of uh, become more water-soluble 
for different reasons. Most people's gallbladder is not functioning well. It's full of sludge. You've got to get the gallbladder working properly before any IV NAD. From the gallbladder, these residues, drug residues, travel down another duct and empty into the upper part of the small intestine. And from there, they must um, pass through the two parts, the small intestine and the colon. The length of, of the intestine, small and large, is about 25 to maybe 35 feet long. And if there's any constipation, it's going to be an issue for the person because these drug residues can pass back into the body and just keep on recirculating. So we have drug residues coming out of cells which enter into the lymphatic fluid, which then enter the blood. They are hopefully cleared by the kidneys and the liver. From the liver, they go to the gallbladder, and from the gallbladder, they go to the intestines. So you can see there's a lot of sort of paths or pathways where these residues, once they're excreted from cells, these pathways have to be working optimally Otherwise, the full benefits of the IV NAD will never be experienced. And the person will all, all, you know, most people, if they don't do this, will have a reoccurrence of their previous symptoms to some degree. So for this reason, I, I sincerely feel that IV NAD should not be a standalone therapy. You have, you have to, to have a holistic approach meaning you have to cover all these pathways, you have to neutrify all the cells, improve mitochondrial function, and the benefits of NAD will be experienced. So this is, this is the, I'd like to go on to part two, and I've had to make this video kind of short because of YouTube. So um, if you'd like more information, well, first of all, go to, go to part two, but if you'd like more information about this our approach, our holistic approach, our website is ivnaddrugaddictions.com. There's our phone number. We're in Salt Lake City. On that website, you can download. Uh, I've written a book, which is on uh, Amazon, but if you'd like to have a free download of that book, which goes into much greater detail, go to our website. We don't ask for an email address for you to download. I um, also would appreciate if you could give us a like on this video. And let's go on to part two. Thank you.